Hi there, I'm Drew Badger, the English Fluency Guide and founder of EnglishAnyone.com. In this video, I'm going to help you improve your English fluency automatically, even if you don't speak, by using some naturally varied review. The basic idea of naturally varied review is to get different kinds of content that help you review things in slightly different ways. So what happens if you listen to one dialogue or something again and again and again, it quickly becomes very boring and your improvement levels off. So you're improving maybe a little bit, maybe the first time you hear it, the second time you hear it, but then it becomes boring after a while. So you have to review this information in different ways. One kind of naturally varied review, and there are many uh, in what we're going to do in this video, is looking at different content uh, done by different people, but it's focusing on the same topic. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, making espresso in this video. Uh, I actually know nothing about making espresso. I'm actually not a fan of coffee. Uh, I do like some kind of sweet things like uh, like an affogato, you know, some maybe like ice cream in some coffee, but I don't really like coffee. I do like the smell of coffee, but I thought it would be a good topic because it's a common thing you can learn more about on YouTube. There are lots of videos about it. Uh, and also it's something I don't know much about, so I can also learn it with you at the same time. If you're doing this by yourself, you would just find a bunch of things about a particular topic and you can watch them again and again, uh, and again, reviewing them. Maybe you watch them one time, then listen to them, try to write something down. You're trying to, again, make the review a little bit different, uh, and this is one way you're getting naturally varied review. This is how you got fluent in your native language, and it will be uh, the same way you get fluent in English. So again, we're going to watch this. Uh, this will be a little bit different from you doing it by yourself because I'm here. Really the benefit of having a guide with you as you're trying to learn is you have someone to explain vocabulary and it makes the learning process much faster. But we'll be covering four different videos in this video. I'm just going to watch them with you. Stop the videos when I maybe see something that's interesting or I want to indicate some vocabulary you should remember. Uh, but the more important thing is as you watch each of the videos, you will notice a little bit more. You will feel a little bit more confident each time. Hey, I remember that previous video. This other guy said the same thing. Uh, but you'll notice this, and again, this is the same way you got fluent in your native language. So you're not trying to just learn everything very quickly one time. It's a process of adding layers, and each time you learn a little bit more, and you feel much more confident because you're learning it all in English. All right, well, let's get started. This should be an entertaining video, uh, and again, I'll leave the links for all four of these videos in the comments so you can go down and watch it. Uh, I know it's nice to just watch them all the way through without anybody talking and saying anything, but this this will be a little bit different because I'm here to help you do this. All right, let's begin. So the first video is just how to make a good espresso with your Gaggia coffee machine. And let's see what they teach. Hi, we're going to take you through the steps to making a great espresso on the Gaggia here. Uh, first step, we're going to take our filter handle off and just put that there. We're going to make it nice and simple, uh, use the pre-ground coffee now, uh, but you could also uh, use your Gadja grinder and grind your, your coffee nice and fresh. Uh, now I'm using the, the double filter here, uh, the, the deeper of the two filters your machine comes with. So I'm going to do two scoops of my coffee. Now when you're buying your coffee for your Gadja, make sure that you buy coffee that's ground uh, specifically for espresso machines. Okay, let me just pause it here right quick. So there have been a couple different expressions uh, already, but we're talking about coffee grinding. So we're going to take these uh, roasted coffee beans and crush them up. And they talk about the different uh, level of fineness of the coffee. So you can get your coffee very finely ground, meaning you can have like almost almost like powder, or you can get it more coarsely ground, where you have it, it's almost like kind of gravel. Uh, so we're looking at for specifically making espresso different levels of fineness, and he's recommending the easy thing, which is just buying uh, specific ground coffee for making espresso. Uh, you'll also notice that his English is different from mine, so he is not an American English speaker. Could be, I can't actually place the accent. It could be Australian, maybe, or British, actually, depending on, uh, he might be trying to speak a little bit more clearly because this looks like a, uh, Maybe it's a bit more of a promotion kind of video, so he wants to speak a bit more clearly. Uh, but let's keep going and we'll see a bit more things coming up along in these steps. 
Uh, it's that little bit finer grind uh, which is going to slow the water down and really ooze through the coffee, pulling out all the great flavor. Ooh, that's a really great phrasal verb right there, to ooze through. So if you think about something like a, like a slime or something, almost like a snail moving very slowly, it's kind of oozing through. So the way if you look at like the filter of the coffee, uh, we have all this coffee in there and we're going to pack it down. He'll explain that in just a moment. Uh, but you really want to pack that in there and so the, the water can filter through the coffee and that's what pulls all of that flavor through there. So the coffee uh, or the water, instead of rushing through, it's oozing through. So if you just turn on like the water and let it go through, you're letting it rush through or fall through. This is oozing through the coffee grind. Now you see we've got our coffee in sort of all sorts of mounds there. What's very important is we distribute the coffee evenly over the filter. Now in simple terms, let's just give it a little tap there. Uh, and that roughly evens that out so there's no easy way for the water to go through. We want the water to, to really uh, go through the coffee pulling out all the flavor. Next what I'm doing now is tamping the, the coffee down. Okay, now here he's talking about, again, there's, there's different ways you can express this. He could talk about pushing this down, but you'll notice there's certain vocabulary that people use in different industries or professions. And so coffee, one of these things, instead of, they, they don't say like press it down, they talk about tamping that down. And so I think this tool is actually called a tamper. Uh, but this is, again, we're, we're pressing something down. And this phrasal verb, to tamp something down, you'll actually hear this used in many different places. You might hear it used uh, as an example, like if there's protests in a particular area, uh, the police maybe are trying to tamp down those. So it means to reduce something or to compress it or to contain it in some way. Now that's packing the, uh, the coffee down. Your machine will come with a little tamp here uh, to make sure that that's nice and sort of flat and evenly distributed in the filter. Uh, next, I'm gonna pop that in the machine. Now notice he says, pop that into the machine. Usually that means you're connecting one thing into something else and often there's some kind of click letting, letting you know that the thing actually happened. So if I want to pop into something, like I might pop into a restaurant right quick to pick up some food, it means I'm going into something quickly to pop in. Uh, and we set that machine going straight away. You'll see that it's coming out and swirling around, giving you that, that great crema that we want from a, uh, a decent espresso. So it's settling out like a little Guinness there. All right, so here he's talking about like the cream of the espresso. So it's still, you know, water coming through the coffee filter and now we're starting to get the, you know, the complexity and it's trying to settle inside these little glasses here. So he's talking about how it looks almost like a Guinness. So this is a dark beer that often when you pour it, it's got that kind of head to it. This is where the bubbles are on top and then you've got the thicker beer on the bottom. And if we stop that there, you see it's still settling out, giving us a great espresso. It's simple as that, really good espresso, nice crema, enjoy. All right, pretty easy. So this was a shorter video and we'll move on to the next one, but pay attention. Uh, you'll notice that often when you, you see some vocabulary or you hear something, you're just building uh, kind of exposure to it. And as you start looking for those same words again in the next videos we'll look at, we're trying to build your understanding uh, to the level of awareness. And as you hear this vocabulary enough times, you'll be prepared for the really the uh, like the language patterns is the best way to express it, but you know what people are going to do and you know the vocabulary they're going to use when they say it. Uh, so let's check out the next video. Let's see what we have here. Uh, this is again how to make an espresso uh, at Toby's Estate Barista. Uh, and so this is actually a school where it's trying to teach people how to make uh, espresso. So let's see what we've got here. Hi, I'm Tom from Toby's Estate, the senior trainer here at our espresso school. Today I'm going to show you how to make an espresso. In Italy, espresso is a way of life. Espresso is literally the Italian word, which means quickly. Fantastic. So he talked about uh, very good at the beginning that this is a way of life. So espresso is a way of life. It talks about it's really important to the culture or to the group of people or something like that. Uh, so you might have something like everybody goes to uh, the pub on a Friday night in some small town. It's a way of life. 
for people. It's a way of life. And also he uses the word literally or literally, literally. Uh, so this is where we're talking about like it's like actually the, the, the way of describing something like it's literally a hundred degrees in this room. So in that, in that sense, like if it actually is a hundred degrees in this room, uh, then that's how we would use literally correctly. Often we'll hear people u using literally incorrectly uh, when they mean something is like, wow, it's like it, it's, it's literally a thousand degrees in this room when it's actually not. So pay attention for this. Uh, this is one time where natives will even be using vocabulary incorrectly, but it's used so commonly this way that, well, just lots of people have been using it. Let's continue. This is an espresso machine, but espresso is also a drink. Espresso is the basis for all the other drinks that you may be familiar with. Cafe latte, flat white, cappuccino, macchiato, etc. To be able to prepare all these drinks properly, you need to really master the espresso. So I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step demonstration of how to achieve this, and I'll just take it from there. One of the most important starting points when you're making any coffee is that your cups are warm. Now, you would assume that they would be warm enough for them sitting up on top of the espresso machine, but to me this one feels like it's not quite warm enough, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of hot water to it, just to retain its temperature, to improve the overall flavor and experience of the drink. Secondly, release the group handle, purge it straight away. All right, to purge something. This means to, to get rid of everything that's inside of that thing. So we might purge, you know, he's maybe got some uh, water or something inside the machine and he wants to get rid of all that. So he might purge that. Knock out the spent grounds. Another word here, spent, the spent ground. So he's knocking out the spent grounds. In this, in this, he's actually physically using the phrasal verb to knock something out, like by knocking, so hitting something like that. So he's hitting the filter and then the coffee grounds are coming out. So the spent grounds. So spent meaning you've already used them, just like money you spent. Get the handle, wipe out the handle. Now, this is very important, can't be understated. You need to clean every single time. A dry cloth is adequate. Over time, you will get a bit of a buildup. So you might want to wash out the spent oils there on the bottom. Over time, you will get a bit of a build up. So build up, if you think about using a coffee filter and you don't clean it, over time, even if you wipe it a little bit, uh, it will still build up over time layers of coffee or other things you don't want in there. It's very important that the handle is dry. Then, <coughs> I'm ready to dose. Now this is an electronic automatic doser, but it also has a manual function. I like to dose manually. I feel it gives me more control over everything that I'm doing. Now this was interesting uh, hearing him use the word dose for this. So I was not expecting that word. So usually a dose means like, uh, like if you're going to take a dose of medicine. So if my dose for today is two pills or I have to drink, I don't know, two cups of something. Uh, but in here is, is, is using it in the same way. But I didn't, I wasn't expecting this vocabulary for talking about making coffee, to have a dose of something. Grind the coffee. Now what I've done is make a little mound and I'm gonna tap it two times. Tapping just settles the coffee down, spreads it around a little bit, and I can see from looking closely that there's a few gaps on the edges there. So I'm just gonna dose up a little bit more. Now you may get a bit of spillage, but what I'm doing here is what we call distribution. Spread those grounds around nice and evenly. There might be a little bit left over, that's okay. Sweep it off with a slight curve. Now notice what he's talking about here and these phrasal verbs and other expressions he's using are really great so you can pay attention to what he's physically doing as he's doing it. So he talks about uh, spreading around or settling down. So if we take you know a bag or a coffee, something like that, and we shake it, then usually like the, the coffee will settle down to the bottom. So he's trying to again fill this little filter uh, with a lot of coffee and make sure he can press all that down, which you'll see in a moment. Tamping. Well, there, go, there goes that tamping word again. So again, when I'm watching these two, I didn't know anything about tamping espresso before I watch it, but now here it is again, tamping it down. Nice and gentle. You don't need to add a lot of pressure to it. It needs to be even and it needs to be level. There may be some coffee left on the edge. Wipe off the lugs. Wipe off. Purge. Purge again. Lock the pop handle in. in. Pop it in. 
So just like, just like the last guy talking about popping something in there, he's using the exact same expression, to pop something in. Isn't that interesting? So what you'll notice when you're doing uh, this kind of learning uh, is you will see some things that, that everybody uses or some things that maybe a lot of people use or some things that are even just particular to that person. So it's almost like a, like a bell curve of the kind of vocabulary you would use. Uh, and so what's important about learning this way or one of the many things that are important about this learning kind or this way of learning uh, is that you might not use all of that vocabulary yourself. You might focus on the things that are used mostly, but you will be much more prepared for other things used in conversations uh, that you might not use. So again, great way to do uh, naturally varied review and a great reason to do it. Turn it on straight away. Straight away, quickly. Right to you may have <clears throat> anywhere from eight possibly up to 15 seconds pre-infusion time. Right, this is another good expression here. You might have anywhere from here to there. So he's talking about how much time it takes for the infusion, how much time it takes for the really the water to go through the coffee. But this is a really good expression you can use. Uh, like, I'm coming to your house. I could be there uh, any time between two and three or anywhere between two and three. And even if I'm talking about time, I can use anywhere. This is when the water soaks into the coffee, the coffee is absorbing the water, the oils are starting to move around, pre-saturation is happening. But from there on in, with the naked group handle, you get these drips start around the center, sorry, start around the edge and wind up in the middle. Now notice here when he corrected himself, again, natives aren't always, you know, maybe they want to say something different or they're explaining something and then they think, oh, here's a, a better way or I misspoke. He put a sorry in there. So he's saying, well, the, you know, the water is going around the center. Uh, oh, I mean, like, sorry, the water is going around uh, the edges. So he's trying to explain something. This is a great way you can just use the word sorry uh, in a conversation like that when you're talking about one thing and you maybe made a mistake or you're switching to something else. Evening up to a nice even pour. What I'm looking for is the color change in the coffee and a change in the thickness of the liquid. Can take around about 35 seconds, but we don't like to worry so much about time or measure. It's really just a feel thing. Place it. Now, right here, he says, we don't like to worry about that. Now, usually this means like he's talking about, it could be people in general, or in his case, since this is a school, it means like at our school, maybe we don't care so much about that. But you'll hear uh, people using the language in this way, talking about we like to do something or whatever, even if you're talking about yourself. Uh, it just makes the language a little bit softer. On your saucer with a spoon and it's ready to go. And look at that. So already we've gone through two videos pretty quickly. Again, you will find the links for these videos in the description below this video. Uh, so you can go and watch uh, all of them. And I recommend maybe you watch them a couple of times. Each time you will learn a little bit more. Uh, so let's see what we have here. So this one is again a slightly different thing. So this is a Home Barista Academy. Welcome to the Gaja Home Barista Academy we would like to share with you the secrets of traditional coffee specialities to relive every day at home with the barista's rituals. Now, one thing I'll begin with, uh you know, this is slightly different from a school talking about this. This is obviously a, a corporate video. So a company is producing this to show you what the product is, how to use it. Uh, and so they're using slightly different language than a regular person might use when they're just talking about making espresso. So one thing you'll, you may have heard already uh, is talking about the ritual. Of making coffee so it's almost like a, like a religious thing like wow there's a ritual you know every day you wake up and you you make your coffee and here's how the special way you make it so ritual makes it sound uh, like a much more amazing thing we start with the Italian espresso with crema naturale you don't need to be a professional barista to make a perfect Italian espresso everyone can learn let's do it you need the right equipment your favorite blend a little study, patience, and practice. Classic is an espresso machine for home use, but with specific professional features such as the brewing group and filter holder, the solenoid valve, the steam wand, and an exclusive set of three filters. One pressurized filter for one or two cups, one cup traditional filter for ground coffee and pod, two cups traditional filter for ground coffee, 
blend is a personal choice. We suggest that you use fresh coffee beans to grind in the moment. Grinding is fundamental to get the best in-cup result. If it is too coarse, the water flows rapidly through it and the espresso is watery. If it is too fine, the space among coffee particles shrinks and there could be an over-extraction or difficulties in extraction. Again, we're hearing that about the grind, the kind of grind from course, where it's, you can actually see the examples of it in this video. Uh, so they really want to help you understand, okay, we want it, like we want the coffee bean that thick rather than this thick. But the way we talk about that is coarse, meaning it's a little bit thicker. Uh, and then we've got fine, where it's very tiny, like a, a tiny grain of sand, almost like powder. That's the right grind size. Now we are ready to prepare a traditional espresso italiano with Gaggia Classic. Place the filter holder in the group. Now notice what he did there. Again, a, a regular everyday casual person might say like, pop in the, the filter or whatever, like we saw in the previous two videos. But here he's talking about place it in there. So again, this is a slightly more maybe classy or educated or a little bit more formal way of describing something because this is, again, it's a, it's a corporate video and switch the machine on. When the machine is ready, the coffee temperature light is steady. Now we suggest you dispense with a bit of water. All right, now we just talked about, now we suggest you dispense or dispense with a bit of water. Do you remember the word that uh, the previous guy used talking about this? Purge, so we're gonna purge some of the water. Remember that even in native conversations, people will use different ways of describing things. And this is why naturally varied review is so important. So rather than trying to learn like one way of doing something, which usually happens when you translate from one language into English, you actually want to see lots of different people talking about things like this. So we can see, ah, one guy says, pop in, and another guy says, place. One woman says, uh, you should purge the water, and another person says uh, you should, like, expel the water, something like that. Then remove the filter holder and fill it with ground coffee. All right, now you can probably imagine what's coming next. Again, I'm trying to help you think more like a native speaker. So we've got our coffee filter, the little holder, uh, and then we've got some coffee. We just put the grounds in it, so the coffee grounds are being put in there. What are we going to do next? Do you remember the word for that? Level the coffee slightly beating the filter holder. Then tamp the coffee using the dedicated tamper. There you go. Tamp the coffee using the dedicated tamper. So some things, again, it's going to be the same for all of these things. And part of this is, it's a really interesting thing about uh, human psychology and language as well. So the more you have something like, like a specialized thing like making espresso, that develops its own vocabulary. And so people who know how to talk about that become part of the in-group of that vocabulary. So I might say, oh, look, he's like pushing the coffee down. And, a, and a, like an experienced professional would say, no, 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 we're tamping it down. And even though it's basically the same thing, this is the vocabulary used by the in-group of something like that. And the more you pay attention, the more you learn from those people, the more you will learn that same vocabulary. So again, this is the difference between learning like a student and learning like a native. Pressing it evenly to obtain a well-leveled and flat surface. Any coffee residues from the edge of the filter holder should be removed before locking it on the brewing group. Now another great word here, residue. The residue of the vocabulary or the residue of the coffee, I should say. Uh, it just means like any little bit of coffee that's still stuck on there. Usually residue, we will have that for coffee is a good example, but you might have, I don't know, like I drink uh, something and leave a little bit left somewhere or I'm cleaning something and there's a little stain somewhere, there's a little bit of residue of something. Insert the filter holder into the brew unit. The filter holder handle. Another way to express, put something in there, place something in there, pop it in or insert. Must be perpendicular to the machine or slightly tilted towards the right. The brewing of a traditional Italian espresso takes between 25 and 30 seconds. The espresso should flow from the machine. There's again that usage of between this amount of time and that amount of time. So it can take 
anywhere from 20 seconds to 30 seconds, or it might take or it might go from 20 seconds to 30 seconds. Again, there are different ways of expressing that. In a slow but steady stream, resembling a little mouse tail. The color of the stream during the brew should change from dark to light as the crema natural begins taking form. Enjoy your authentic Italian espresso. Boom. Well, another interesting video there. Hopefully you're feeling a little bit more confident with each video we watch. Again, it'll be nice for you to watch these. You can use the links in the description of this video uh, as you go and watch the whole videos by yourself if you'd like to do that. All right, let's go to the last one. Moving along here. All right, so this video, uh, this is at somebody's house. So this is not going to be a corporate video and you're going to see a little bit more casual vocabulary when talking about things. I'll explain those uh, as he uses these expressions, but this is also a different way of making espresso. So look for some of the similarities or the same vocabulary he's using, but some new things as well. This video is to show my workflow with the Nine Barista stovetop espresso maker. The Nine Barista is stored unassembled by the stove. The first thing I do is to fill the bottom chamber with water. There's a mark on the inside of the chamber that shows how much to fill it. The total volume is 120 milliliters. Next, there's a heat transfer plate that goes on the burner. This is used with either gas or electric burners. If you have an induction stove, there's a different induction adapter plate that you would use. So he's talking about different kinds of stoves here. So someone might have an electric stove. This is a gas one. So we want to use this uh, little heat distribution thing uh, as we're going to make the espresso on this. This is actually a really interesting little tool. The middle part gets screwed onto the bottom chamber. I just have to be a little careful that water doesn't spill out as I'm putting these two parts together. Then the burner is turned on. I set it so the flames surround the bottom of the nine barista, which is halfway between medium and high on the burner knob on my stove. From this point, it's about five and a half minutes until the water is boiling to the point where the extraction begins. All right, so it's about five minutes until the water is boiling to the point where the extraction begins. So we do something to the point where, like, okay, now we're boiling the water up until this point, and now the extraction starts coming. Uh, so again, the tool he's using is different, but the vocabulary is the same here. So he's talking about extracting the extraction uh, of the coffee, of the, the rich, beautiful espresso flavor from the coffee beans. Next is grinding the beans. I'm shooting for 18.5 grams with this batch of coffee beans. All right, next is grinding the beans, and he says he's shooting for a certain amount. So to shoot for, if you imagine you have a target in front of you, you're trying to get maybe in the middle of that target, you're shooting for that. Maybe you don't get it exactly, but that's what your aim is. You're shooting for that thing. Now the top part gets assembled. The Nine Barista uses a 53 millimeter basket. I bought the funnel to help with transferring the coffee from the container into the basket. I keep a toothpick near my setup as a low rent WDT tool. All right, so a low rent tool, low rent, just means it's like a cheap thing. So he's using that to kind of stir the, the coffee around. Let's see if he tamps it down like the, uh, the other people do. The coffee gets tamped, and then the silicone basket cap is inserted. The coffee gets tamped. So again, he's still using that same expression, even though you could just say pressing the coffee down. The top assembly is flipped over and attached to the middle and bottom parts on the stove. Now we just have to wait for the extraction to start. Now we have to wait for the extraction. Again, he's using that same vocabulary, the extraction. Here's the extraction. My goal is 25 to 35 seconds. This one ran about 40 seconds, which is a little bit longer than what I want. You can hear the boiling increase at the end. That's how I know that the extraction is done. This espresso was very good. The shot was 44 grams, which is about a 1 to 2.4 ratio, maybe a little less. It was a little on the strong, bitter side, compared to other espressos I've made with this batch of beans, which I could predict because the extraction was longer than what I usually go for. 
it was a little on the strong, bitter side. So if you can imagine something, like if I take this pen over here, I'm gonna mark this between like sweet or maybe weak over here or strong and bitter. So if I want to have my coffee, like I want it on the strong side over here, like on the weak side, on the strong side, same thing. Wow, all right, well that's the end of that video. Very interesting, you can see he's really being scientific about this, and again, that's probably part of the fun of coffee. You got the chemistry here, and you want to get the beans just the right way, and, and all of this, uh, again, doesn't really make me excited about coffee. I need to put a lot of milk and sugar in mine. Uh, but hopefully, this video makes sense for you. The This particular kind of naturally varied review, where we're trying to find one particular thing, and you can do this with really anything you like, uh, again, you can even watch more espresso videos after this and see how well you like them. Uh, but I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, this is the kind of thing we do in Fluent for Life. So I'm actually trying to take you through real conversations rather than only something like just making a particular coffee. Really, the goal of that program is to show you really in detail with lots of different conversations. And we, we talk about the vocabulary and the grammar and all of these things. And because you're reviewing them all in different ways, you automatically and naturally develop fluency without having to do a lot of some speaking practice or even have to be uh, you know, taking a long time to get fluent. Really, this is a much more efficient way of learning uh, than trying to just like learn the traditional textbook way. Uh, and again, if you'd really like to learn more, you can click on the link in the description of this video, but uh, try the uh, videos in the description and you can go find these same videos. I encourage you to look for more. And each time you watch another one, you will feel yourself becoming a little bit more fluent, even if you don't speak. Hopefully that's a, a very exciting thing. I know that was exciting for me when I found this in uh, Japanese, and that's how I became fluent in Japanese. Maybe I'll watch some espresso videos about that, but it would probably be pretty quick for me to learn that vocabulary uh, if I watched a few videos. All right, well, again, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like it, share it with other people who are interested in learning this way, especially if they've been learning the traditional way for a long time without results. It really is great to become a fluent speaker easily and quickly. All you need to do is start learning more like a native. If you'd like to learn more about that, click on the, click on the link in the description, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.